Welcome to PhotoArca Camera Connect Pro. Let's take a deep dive look at the settings that are configurable within the application to give you complete control over your image files. First off, we need to gain access to the settings section of the app. To access the configuration section, either tap on the gear icon at the top left of the screen, or swipe from left to right in the app. Tap on Event Configuration to enter the configuration area. Save Load tab. The Save Load Configuration screen allows you to create different backup profiles depending on what you'd like the app to do. This can be configured for different cameras that you use or for different projects etc., all to make it easier for you to streamline your workflow and make accessing your files more efficient and meaningful. Using different settings makes backing up and storage simpler and more efficient. To get started, start by tapping in the Save File Name field and give your profile a name. In this example, we will use default. Once you've keyed in your profile name, tap on the Save button to save the profile parameters. Found below the Save button are the Load and Delete Configuration buttons. The Load Configuration button allows you to load a previously created backup profile and all the settings that you set within it. The Delete Configuration button allows you to delete a backup profile that you have previously created and no longer wish to use. The Load from Code button offers you the opportunity to load an existing profile that you've created on to a different device. For example, if you created a backup profile on your iPhone and want to perform a backup on your iPad, you would simply tap the Load from Code button on your iPad and scan the QR code from your iPhone. This will save you the effort of re-inputting all the backup parameters to keep your backups consistent from device to device. The next option is the Share QR Code. This allows you to create a QR code with all the settings that you have assigned for your profile. This QR code can be scanned by a different device, as described above, to load your backup profile and all the parameters contained therein. You can share this QR code via AirDrop, Messages, copy the QR code to be pasted into a document or save it to Apple Photos or to any other location using the Files app. The last section on this tab is the Event Configuration Password. Here you can secure your configuration profiles by establishing a configuration password. Once you input the password, you will need to confirm it and then save the settings. The next time you attempt to access the settings section of the app, you will need to key in the password in order to make any changes. This is helpful if you're at an event working with other photographers, you can share your profile with them but they cannot change the default settings that you have established thereby ensuring that everyone is using the same settings. Let's move on to the next tab in the Configuration section. File Backup Backup Config section Tap on the File Backup tab at the bottom of the screen to access the Backup Configuration area of the app. In this screen you can change where the files are stored on your device. When you first install the app, it will store your files in a default location. If you are OK with using the default, then you don't need to make any changes, but generally you will want control over where the files are stored on your device to make them easier to find. To customize where the files are stored, you can change the default location by tapping on the local backup path link which is shown in blue. Tapping on the link will open up the device's files app which will allow you to navigate to where you'd like the files stored. In this example, we'll tap on the On My iPad to take us to the root folder of the device, then we'll tap on the Add Folder link at the top of the window and input a name for our folder. In this example, we're using Holiday Backup as our folder name. Once we key in our desired name, tap on Open at the top right of the screen to create and enter the newly created folder, and then open again to select it for use by the app. After selecting your desired storage location, the app will take you back to the configuration screen where you will see the folder you've just created as the backup path for your files. Don't be concerned if you see one or more percent icons in the file name, as this is used by iOS as a placeholder for a space in your folder name and is normal. Next you will see the Use Downloaded Photos Date toggle which will determine the date under which your photos are stored. For example, if you toggle this to on, then photos taken on January 15, 2024 will be found in the 01 underscore 15 underscore 24 folder, and any other photos and videos will be saved in directories named the date they were taken. This information is taken from the camera's EXIF file, so if your camera's date and time is incorrect, it will also be filed incorrectly. In this instance, you can toggle this setting to off, then all the images and videos will be saved in a folder named the date that you performed the backup. For example, 
If you did the backup of your files on February 10th, then it would keep all the images in a folder called 02 underscore 10 underscore 24, regardless of the date in the EXIF file information. The next choice you have allows for a time zone offset. This will adjust the image capture time by the amount of offset in minutes that you input. This is helpful if you're traveling and forgot to change your camera's internal time to take into account a different time zone or daylight savings time. You can leave this blank unless you know that your camera time was set incorrectly and want the time to be corrected. The image capture time is pulled from the image file's EXIF file information. If your camera didn't record the time, then the download time will be used. This value can be either positive or negative to set the time forward or back. Next is an option that allows you to organize your files by file type. If you want each file type in its own subdirectory, toggle the group backups by file type button to on. This will store all the images and videos by their file type in a subdirectory which is named the file extension, for example, JPEG, MOV, RAW, and so on. If this option is not enabled, the app will put all of your files in the same folder regardless of file type. Note that all of these directories will be found in a date folder format that was set earlier. File Backup Details section This section deals with the processing settings that you want applied. We strongly suggest leaving the settings at their defaults as you don't want to overwhelm your device and cause the backup to stall or worse fail. Because PhotoArca has been designed to run on any iPad or iPhone, how it runs and performs your backups will be limited by the power of your device. Newer devices will obviously do it faster than older ones will. The Pro models of iPads and iPhones have larger internal system memory which can handle larger files in greater quantities than their non-Pro counterparts. As your device's internal system memory is different than its storage capacity, and it is often not disclosed by Apple, adjustments can be made in this section to increase the backup and processing performance if desired. There is nothing wrong with using the default settings, it just may take a little longer than if you tweaked it for your specific device. The submit after x second setting will cause the app to wait the input number of seconds before it starts the renaming and writing processes of the app. Files are downloaded from the camera or external device and stored in a waiting to process state, when the set time expires, it will process the images that are in that waiting state. The number of images that it processes is determined by the value put in the next field that is the load from files, batch size setting. This value determines the maximum number of files that can be in the waiting state until processing starts. By varying these two values, you can improve the performance of the app. We strongly suggest trying a few different settings, first by varying the number of files and then the wait time until processing begins. If you find that the time runs out before all the files are downloaded, then increase the process wait time, but if you're downloaded a lot faster and there is still plenty of time left, then you can consider decreasing it. On the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we can safely run 100 as the batch size, and 15 seconds for submit processing on photo files that are approximately 40 megabytes in size. Once you have the correct mixture of size and time, you can save it in a profile for that specific camera or file types. RAW and movie files are generally larger and will have lower batch size with longer processing than simple JPEG files. The last option on this tab is the Apple Photos Storage section. When this setting is toggled to on, it will store your downloaded photos to the Apple Photos folder in addition to storing them locally in the preset image storage folder. Currently only image files can be stored with Apple Photos as video files are not currently permitted and will be added once Apple allows it. Finally, tap on Save at the top right to save the settings. File Naming Tap on File Naming to access the file naming options within the app. Automatic File Naming The default setting is automatic. This will rename your files from the camera's default naming convention to the date and time that the photo was taken, plus an incrementing index number. The automatic naming format is a two-digit year, hyphen, two-digit month, hyphen, two-digit day, hyphen, two-digit hour in the 24-hour format, hyphen, two-digit minute, hyphen, and an incremental frame number. The none option. The none option is for when you want to leave the file names in the same format as they are named by the camera. This may be a desirable option if you are simply backing up the files to your device as a fail-safe to your camera's memory card and want to be able to refer to either of the files on your camera or on your device. 
To set the app to this setting, simply tap on the None tab to enable that option and save your settings by tapping on the Save button at the top right of the app. Manual File Naming If you want to apply a custom naming convention to your images, you would tap on the Manual tab which provides a myriad of options in how the files will be named. Let's examine the options in more detail. The first choice you have applies a file name's prefix. The prefix is the first part of the file name that your photos and videos will be renamed to. For example, if you were on holidays and wanted to record the city or icon you were visiting in your file name, you could put the city or icon as the file's prefix. Let's pretend that we're in France visiting Paris. You could put France as the file prefix and when the app renames the files, it will start each file name with France. That would be followed by the next option, which is the file suffix. The prefix and suffix are separated by a delimiter, which is selected in the sequence delimiter section found further down in the settings. Let's assume for this example, that we'll put Paris as the constant suffix. Using these settings, the file names would be France followed by the sequence delimiter and then Paris. By default the sequence delimiter is a hyphen, but you can also choose an underscore or no delimiter at all. The delimiter is used to determine the breakpoint of the file name when sorting images into directories, as discussed in the final option below. The next option is to include the suffix in the image file's exifs comment section. This can be helpful if you only want the first part of the file name to be in the comment field. Some processing apps will look at the comment field when filtering, so you can add that if you like to help filter images in post-processing. Generally, we would suggest keeping the suffix included, but you don't have to if you don't need it. The next option is the generated suffix length. This pertains to the index or frame number that is put at the end of the file name, it is set by default to 5, so you could increment to 99,999 frames before it resets to 0. Generally this is more than sufficient because you would be changing your prefix on a regular basis to reflect how you want your images to be categorized. The maximum file name length is set to default at 100, generally this isn't something you need to change, but some operating systems have file name length limitations, and most are good up to 256 characters, so we've provided a mechanism to make the change if necessary. The date format is the next option you can choose in file naming, and there are many options. Here you select the date and time format that you want included in your file name. The default is a two-digit month followed by a two-digit day, then a two-digit hour in 24-hour mode, and a two-digit minute. All of which are delimited by an underscore by default. You can change the delimiter to your choice of underscore, hyphen, or no delimiter at all. The last options are the named directory depth, and whether or not to use the named directories option. If the use named directories on backup is enabled, the app will create subdirectories based on the file naming prefix and suffix with the number of subdirectories based on the input directory depth that is specified. In the example above, where France and Paris were used as the file name prefix and suffix, if you enabled this option and set the directory depth to 1, the directory structure would be the photo date, then a folder matching the prefix you specified, in this case France, and then the image files, either all in one directory or grouped by file type if that option was set to on in the file backup tab. If the directory depth is set to 2, then the directory structure will be the photo date, then a directory called France, then a directory called Paris and all the images stored inside the Paris directory, again depending on whether or not group backups was enabled. There is no limit to this, but each element that you would want a subdirectory created for would need to be separated by a hyphen in the file name. So you could have put the prefix to France Paris and the suffix to Eiffel Tower, then if you wanted to store the images by country, city and icon, you would set the directory depth to 3, with the resultant directories would then be, photo date, France, Paris and finally Eiffel Tower with all the images contained therein. This is incredibly powerful as you can back up and organize while you're still photographing and going from one place to the next. It takes seconds to do and saves a lot of time when you finally get home in front of a computer. Don't forget to tap on save to save your settings to the current profile. Camera tab, external camera connections. The last settings tab is the camera tab which configures the how the app accesses your camera's connections. The first option is the allow downloading duplicate photos from connected device. When enabled, it will download files that have the same file name on the device, overwriting the first instance of the file. Duplicate files are possible when your camera has multiple card slots, 
and the camera is set to duplicate or backup files on the secondary card. If your camera only has one card slot, this setting doesn't apply or impact your backup. Note, the app will not create a duplicate of the file, rather it will overwrite the initial instance of the file. If it is left untoggled, it will skip the duplicate files. The next toggle is the always download all photos from connected device, this will do just as the name says and pull all image files from the camera regardless of when they were created. If you are only interested in backing up photos from a specific date and time forward, then you would toggle the setting to off and you will be presented with a date and time selection box when you start the backup. This is helpful when you're backing up multiple times a day and don't want to re-import files that you've already backed up. For example, if you are a wedding photographer and are backing up after every photo event during the day, you would simply select the date and time of your last backup and it will back up only the files that were taken after the time specified. Similarly, if you're on holidays and perform a backup at the end of each day, you would simply select the current date when starting the backup and it will ignore any images taken before the selected date and time and not all of the files that are on your memory card. The next toggle is the delete photos from connected device after download. This toggle is off by default and will not remove files from the memory card after it has downloaded the files. It is good practice to keep the image files on both the card and on your device until you need the space on the memory card or you've moved your backup to your computer or other storage medium. The more places your files are stored the greater the safety of not losing them. All it takes is for someone to steal your phone or camera or they get damaged for you to lose your images. The more places your files are stored the better. Finally, tap on the save link at the top right of the app to save your settings, and then tap the back link to return to the main screen. Conclusion You are now ready to begin to use the app. Every time you launch the app the default settings will be automatically loaded and all you need to do is connect your camera or card reader to begin. Thanks for watching.